Hey fellow Vault Winners, it's Angry Tartul, and that's the second part of Legendary Perks Tested. And I'm back to Survivor Shortcut just for a moment because after my last video I was surprised that you were so interested in this particular perk. That was totally something I wasn't expecting. Then to answer some of the questions that I failed to explain first time, you cannot trade the syringes that you are getting from this pack that it's generated. You cannot drop them or put them into any containers. They will get destroyed, the same like gold bullion stuff. Then it's only for you. And it's capped at those numbers you cannot store anymore. It will be generating them until you, like if it's max rank, until you have 10 and then stop. Nothing more will happen until you use some. Next, it's not the same as a steam pack and you cannot use it with Born Survival, and you cannot use this uh, syringe to revive other players. Although, similarly to Steampack, it will heal your limb. You just need to equip it on your quick wheel and use it from your quick wheel, and then yes, then it's working exactly like a Steampack. Plus, of course, food and water. And by mistake last time, I had equipped Traveling Pharmacy, then base weight of this cam is 0.1. Not 0 0.01. 0 0.01 is with Traveling Pharmacy. It's a chem and it's reduced by chem reducing perks. And now about those damage related perks. Mitzi agreed to help me test them. Then those perks I will talk about in part 3 of Legendary Perks. As I still need to know exactly how they interact with other players. I know already how those perks work if you are using it by yourself. But I need to see the interaction if more people have it equipped and how it works. Yeah, follow through is the second one that we'll be testing with Mitzi. The follow through and the taking one for the team. And now for today's video, we have what rats? Power Armor Reboot, Ammo Factory, and Electric Absorption. And as I'm in my camp, then let's start with Ammo Factory. Uh, of course, I have equipped as well Ammo Smith and Super Duper. Then we'll take a look exactly how much ammo we can get. What's the actual boost? And we take a look on 50 caliber rounds because the base value of 50 caliber rounds is 100. Then with those perks, we are basically getting 350% extra, 350% bonus, as 100 is a baseline and we are getting 450 per craft. Now we need to figure out how it interacts with Super Duper, that's a little bit more tricky as I need to keep dropping the ammo after every craft. Super Duper triggered. Yes, we have Super Duper. How much do we have? 550. Then Super Duper, when trigger, it's giving us extra 100. Which means it double up only the base amount. Not the total, not the 450, only from the base amount like it was before then. Super Duper will only give you one extra base amount. But the most important part, the ammo factory bonus is multiplicative with Ammo Smith. It's how we can achieve such a crazy amount of ammo crafts. It's insane value for this legendary perk. And now let's test what rats. Unfortunately, I cannot max it out. I don't have enough perk points in here, but if I max it out, it will be twice as effective. And don't look at the first part. Rat resistance, it's not really too important because it barely provides you any rat resistance. If you have 50, 100 or 300, there is almost no difference. The diminishing return is crazy on rat resist. And now let me go into the nuke zone. Unfortunately, nuke zone seems to be broken. There is no radiation here. Yeah, nuke zone just disappeared. That's a bad timing. Okay, let's go to Emmet Mountain Disposal Site. Some hardcore rad. And now we can have some rats. There's some crazy radiation in this area. And now you can see that I'm still getting rats, but radiation in here is way stronger than radiation in the nuke zone. Then let's go out and now you should be able to see that rats are healing. Free rat healing, it's very slow. But it does help and you are losing rats a little bit. It's definitely not strong enough to go into a nuke zone without a power armor or hazmat suit. It's 
good enough though for some side radiation even if you are not wearing power armor so let me exit it for a moment my red resistance is 105 if I go close to those barrels, you can see that I'm still taking rats, but I move away and it starts healing then. If you are not constantly taking rats, it's quite useful and max out the healing of the radiation will be twice as fast. And if you have a lot of rat shield, you can actually try and with this perk max out and multiple rat shield use at once, you can probably go into a nuke zone with just using rad away from time to time but it's still it will cost you a lot of rad aways unless you are with a team and you will use perk to keep healing each other radiation on top of this legendary perk like if i use three rat shields this will give me over 1k rat resistance that's more than a hazmat suit by five but in the same time i go back to those barrels and as you can see, I'm slowly taking rats. Although it will be enough with max out perk to just keep radiation from ballers away, but still not enough to keep radiation from nuke zone. That's important. Some people think that only rat resistance matter. It's not true, but is there really like hidden stuff, like hidden resistance on power armor and hazmat suit that have nothing to do with rat resistance, like broken hazmat suit with zero rat resistance provide you more protection than 10,000 rat resistance without hazmat suit. I hope it will illustrate the situation the best. And now try, and now it's time to try and recharge some of my fusion cores. As you can see, I intentionally do not have any full fusion cores and I have Gatling laser equipped and power armor and let's see what we can do. With this pack equipped, we just need to find an enemy that does energy damage. Okay, we have some robots that do energy damage and my fusion core is already recharged. That was rather fast. Unfortunately, it does not recharge my fusion core in the laser or other fusion cores in my inventory. It only applies on the fusion core that is in power armor. Then we'll try to discharge one and replace it. And I don't know if you notice, but as well, apart from the fact that my fusion core is fully charged, from time to time when this perk triggers, my health is going back up. Oh, like now. It's like healthy boost to your health when you are getting energy damage. And this perk is way better than actually indicated on the perk card. This healing is this healing is something that I'm way more interested than this recharge rate of the fusion core. Like even the low damage that those robots are doing seems to trigger a full heal effect. That's not even stated. Okay, let's try to replace this fusion core. Let's load the empty one and enter my power armor before they will kill me. All right, now my fusion core is not full. Oh, look at the, all this recharge is like crazy. Like couple shots when it triggers and it's fully charged. It's super easy to recharge your cores and you are into core recharging. Yep, it's looked like for power armor users, it's way better than indicated in the perk cards. Guess what? My full health heavy gunner will be using this stuff. Oh, finally, I need to do some damage. Oh, it does work with this assault room beam. He cannot hire me at all. He can only recharge my core and heal me up. <laughs> Level 75 assault room is a joke if you have this perk. Wow. Seriously, assault room. Okay, let's see if it works versus turrets in the silo as well. Those should be laser, yeah, it's marked as a laser turret. Come on. And... It doesn't work. I don't know why, but it doesn't work versus laser turrets. They are clearly doing energy damage, they are laser turrets. Now let's try to test this power armor reboot. Let's ask super mutants for help with testing. 
Excuse me, can I have some help with testing? Ah. Uh, fail, let's try again. I was getting crazy damage. Yeah, super mutants. Oh, it works! It just refilled my entire health bar like instant! There is not even anything like a down animation, there is just straight up full health bar. Can I trigger it a couple times in a row? Oh, it triggered twice in a row. Three times in a row, then it can trigger in a row. Four times, five. Six times. Is it stuck? Nope. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it can trigger in a row. I don't know if it's intended or not. But it can indeed trigger in a row. Okay, we have this spare card tested. Unfortunately, I cannot test it with the Revenant as I don't have it on this character. Unless I quickly swap character. Okay, let's see if I can kill myself to trigger Revenant. Attempt number two. I triggered the perk. Do I have a Reven Revenant? Uh, nope. Yeah, unfortunately, it does not trigger Revenant. It just refills your health bar. Okay, good to know. We have one more empty slot because there is one more perk for testing. And this perk is sprinting in power armor, power sprinter. First, without this perk. Let's sprint over there and let's see how much AP it will cost me. Okay, let's go and it's just a little bit over the water bar. Then now we'll sprint back to the trash can, but we'll have this legendary perk equipped. Okay, now we have power sprinter equipped. Let me know if you will spot any difference. Let's run. And here we go, we run. We used a little bit less AP, and is there anything else? I don't see any difference in speed. Everything feels normal. The, the only difference is I'm using slightly less AP. Not impressed, as expected, unfortunately. There is no hidden stuff unless nothing I know about. If you know about any hidden ability, any hidden stat with this power sprinter perk, let me know. And I almost forgot about this legendary ammo crafting perk. It does work on cores. As you can see, plasma cores, I will get four instead of one. And it does work on ultra sight ammo, including ultra sight cores. As you can see, plasma cores, I will get nine. And fusion cores, I will get nine. Violet flux to fusion cores. There's no change in crafting cost. As it should be, yeah, but it's still worth to take a look on. Yeah, there's no chance that I can get nine ultra side fusion cores from two regular cores and one flux. Then that's the value in there. And that's everything for today's episode with testing legendary perks. And by the way, did you notice that those heavy machine gun turrets are level 50? Was those always level 50? I'm not sure, but. That's not the point of this video. Yeah, that's that's about it for this episode of Legendary Perks. And as always, don't hesitate to ask questions in comment section. I always try to answer as many as I can. And as always, thank you a lot for watching and see you guys in the next one.